We need to get our vaccine joy to the base before the anti-vaxxers catch us. Not so fast. Neurodegenerative diseases are natural. It should be allowed to run their course. But vaccinations help save millions of lives from these preventable diseases. And by being vaccinated, we help those who cannot be vaccinated due to medical reasons. Huh. Lies. Never. Clostridiums and why are they harmful? Clostridiums, in this case Clostridium tetani, are gram-positive anaerobic bacteria. While they are growing, they have several flagella. This stage is where they produce the toxic protein titanospasmin. Once mature, the flagella fall off to make room for a spore. These spores are capable of surviving oxygen and other environmental extremes and remain in the spore phase until anaerobic conditions, such as a healing wound, allow for germination. Once germinated, the spores mature and begin releasing titanospasmin. Titanospasmin is the second deadliest toxin in the galaxy, with only its cousin botulinum having more potency. Approximately 175 nanograms can kill a 154 pound humanoid. Titanospasmin is a rather large protein with a total mass of 150 kilodaltons. The 50 kilodalton light chain is responsible for the toxicity of the molecule, which we'll talk about later. The 100 kilodalton heavy chain is responsible for binding to axonal membranes. The heavy chain can be broken into two subunits, HN and HC. HN, for which there is no crystal structure in our records, is responsible for translocating the light chain across the axonal membrane. It does this via a disulfide bond that keeps the heavy and light chains together while creating a transmembrane pore in a nerve cell. The HC subunit can be broken down even further into two distinct domains the beta trefoil, carboxyl end, and the jelly roll, amino end. Once the toxin has been released into the circulation system of the body, it eventually reaches the alpha motor neurons and the muscles. It then begins to make its way to the central nervous system via retrograde axonal transport by initially binding to gangliosides, which are glycosphingolipids on the axonal membrane of the nerve cell. There are two main binding sites that bind to the gangliosides of GT1B, both of which are located in the beta trefoil of the HC subunit. The first site, the GAL-GAL-NAC binding site, is a narrow groove where the side chain of histidine 1271, which is located here on the right, and the main chain of the carbonyl oxygen of threonine 1270, right here, forms hydrogen bonds with OH4 and 6 and O5, the GAL4 of the GT1B. Here you can see a larger photo of all the hydrogen bonds. The second site is the CA7, CA6 site, which is a shallow pocket where hydrogen bonding also occurs. Aspartate 1214, asparagine 1216, tyrosine 1229, arginine 1226, and aspartate 1147 all form hydrogen bonds. As you can see in this page, picture, the ganglia side is not located at all near these residues, and it is hypothesized that the HC fragment is capable of cross-linking two separate ganglia sides. Another hypothesis is that two arms of the ganglia side can interact with more than one HC fragment. Either way, this increases the uptake of tetanospasmin, putting Luke in more harm the longer the tetanospasmin is in his system. Once the titanospasmin has reached the CNS, the light chain begins to go to work. Little is known about exactly how titanospasmin undergoes transcytosis from the axon into the cytosol of the CNS. However, it is known that once the titanospasmin has been translocated, the disulfide bond between the heavy and light chain is reduced by the NADPH thioredoxin reductase thioredoxin redox system. The light chain acts as a zinc metalloproteinase, in this case specifically an endopeptidase that attacks the vesicle-associated membrane proteins. VAMP. The proteins are part of the snare complex, seen here, 
and the specific vamp proteins targeted by titanospasmin are called synaptobrevins. It cleaves the glutamine 76 phenylalanine 77 bond of synaptobrevin. Once cleaved, the damage is permanent and can only be fixed by the growth of new axon terminals. The cleavage lowers the stability of the snare complex by preventing inhibitory vesicle fusion to the membrane. These vesicles contain neurotransmitters that stop the contraction of the nerves, such as glycine and GABA. The nerves become excited, but have no way to return to a low energy state. This is what causes the characteristic spasms of tetanus. Help us, DTG Thrill. You're our only hope. Beep, boop. Beep, 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 boop. Beep, 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 boop. Beep, beep, boop. Beep, boop. Beep, boop. Beep, boop. Beep, boop. Now we can vaccinate the entire galaxy!